Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering how to install and use ZRAM on your Linux installation. What exactly is ZRAM? Well, it's a feature in the Linux kernel that allows the creation of a compressed block device in RAM. Or in other words, it enables the system to use a portion of your RAM as a compressed swap space or cache. Now, the benefits of doing this is that it provides improved performance and memory efficiency since the system is now less reliant on slower storage devices such as hard drives or solid state drives. Instead, it's now opting to use RAM, which is significantly faster. Now, if all of that sounds a bit technical for you, all you really need to know is that ZRAM will be more beneficial for machines that have a limited amount of memory, such as IoT devices, as you're effectively increasing the amount of available memory. Now, some distributions such as Fedora have enabled ZRAM for a default for a while now, but it's also possible to use it with other distributions. Now in this video, I'll be covering how to use it on Endeavor OS, which is based on Arch Linux, as well as using it on, with Ubuntu-based distributions as well. So the installation process of ZRAM is straightforward, and the process is largely the same on most Linux distributions, in that you install the ZRAM package using your package manager, and then you enable it to run a boot. So for example, if you're running a Arch-based distribution, then you can install the ZRAM generator package with the following terminal command, which is sudo pacman space dash s and then ZRAM generator. So by default, ZRAM is configured to use 50% of all available RAM. But please note that this is available RAM. It doesn't mean that 50% of your total system memory is now unusable by applications or the operating systems. So in other words, if an application requires memory, then it's still gonna get it and it'll take priority. However, you can modify this behavior. You just need to create and edit a ZRAM configuration file. Now, by default on an Arch-based distribution, this doesn't actually exist, but we can create it with the following couple of terminal commands. First of all, we're gonna move across to the systemd folder, which we can do with cd slash etc slash systemd, and then create a new config file called zramgenerator.config, which we can do with sudo nano zramgenerator.config. And within this particular file, there's just three lines you want to add. The first one with square brackets is zram zero, and then zram dash star size equals ram slash two, and then at the bottom eof. So in this case, zram size ram slash two refers to using 50% of your system resources. Alternatively, if you only wanted to use a quarter, you'd swap that to a slash four. But in either case, once you've made some changes, save the file, and then reboot your machine to complete the process. Now, when it comes to Ubuntu-based distributions, the process is slightly different, but once again, you're still installing ZRAM and then set it to run at boot. So to install ZRAM on a Ubuntu-based distribution, you would use the following command, which is sudo apt install zram-config. Once ZRAM's installed, we need to start the company in service, which we can do with the following command sudo system ctl start zram config.service. Now, once again on Ubuntu, you'll find that zram is configured to use 50% available RAM out of the box. But again, we can modify this behavior. You just need to edit the zram configuration file. In this case, we're going to use the command sudo nano slash usr slash bin slash init dash zram swapping. And yet again, in this particular case, the total memory slash 2 refers to how much is going to be used. So again, slash 2 is 50% of the RAM. Again, if you want to change it to 4, that's a quarter of the RAM once again. As of before, make your changes, save the file, and then reboot your system to apply. And the final step in the process is to disable the swap file. And this may have been something that you installed when you first set up your Linux distribution. Now this is important to disable because both ZRAM and the swap file can interfere with each other. And the easiest way I've found to do that is to disable the swap file using the fstab file. On both Arch and Ubuntu based distributions, you can do it with the following terminal commander, which is sudo nano slash etc slash fstab. And it's very straightforward to disable the swap file. All you need to do is scroll into the section down here where it says swap file, and then stick a hash and that will disable it for you. Once again, Save the file once you've done, and then reboot your system to finish the process. At this point, ZRAM's now enabled on your system, and we're all done. So in conclusion, ZRAM is an excellent feature of the Linux kernel, and it's one that I tend to use on all of my systems, as there's no noticeable drawback. And even if there was, you can easily disable and enable it on a whim without having to rebuild your entire system. 
As always, thank you very much for watching this video today, guys. And if you did find this video helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, share the video if you haven't already, and if you would like to support me in, the, in what I do on this channel, please subscribe today. Thanks again, and no doubt I'll see you next time. Bye now.